Imagine for a moment you're trying to make a really informed decision about a company. Maybe you're thinking about an investment or you're just you know curious about its financial health. You pull up all the usual resources and what you often find. A whole stack of glowing analyst reports, right? Full of positive forecasts, enthusiastic recommendations. It's noisy out there. But what about the companies where there's just, well, crickets? No reports, no analyses, just this noticeable quiet. What does that silence really mean in the often very loud world of financial markets? Today, we're diving into exactly that mystery. Our deep dive is into a fascinating new study. It's from Tsinghua University titled The Truth of Silence, Bad Signal of No Analyst Report. This research apparently uncovers a powerful kind of hidden signal in the capital market, analyst silence. So our mission today is to unpack this whole idea, figure out the surprising theory behind why analysts might stay quiet, discover how this silence is actually measured, explore the frankly striking results of this quiet signal, and maybe most importantly, what all of this means for you and how you understand market information. Thank you for tuning in to Quantopian's Quant Radio, your AI-driven podcast exploring everything related to quantitative finance. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on future releases. For more quant-focused content, join us at community.quantopian.com. There you can explore a wealth of resources, connect with fellow quants, engage in insightful discussions, and enhance your skills through our extensive range of online courses. Quant Radio is intended to help people develop their knowledge and skills in quant finance. This podcast is not intended to provide investment advice. And now, back to the episode. Yeah, what's truly captivating here is the paradox, isn't it? Analysts are, well, they're supposed to be these vital conduits of information, right? But the public reports, they often lean overwhelmingly optimistic. I mean, think about it. Traditionally, less than, what, 10% of all published reports are negative? This study suggests that the real insight might not be in the enthusiastic reports they do publish, but kind of profoundly, in what they don't. Analyst silence, in a way, could be seen as like a scientific method to cut through that optimism bias we see so often. Okay, let's unpack that theory then, because it really flips a lot of assumptions on their head. Mm -hmm. We typically see analysts as these critical intermediaries, you know, helping investors make sense of complex company data. But this paper really highlights a known issue, this pervasive optimism bias. Why are analyst reports so relentlessly positive? What makes them so reluctant to deliver bad news publicly? Well, it, it truly boils down to the mechanics of the industry, really. Analysts operate in a very relationship-driven environment. It's all about access. They need to maintain good standing with company management to gain access to valuable, timely information of the kind of insights that, you know, make their reports stand out. And beyond that, their firms often rely on these very same relationships to generate corporate finance business. And the analysts themselves, well, they stimulate brokerage commissions. So issuing a negative report can jeopardize all these really crucial ties. So when they're faced with genuinely negative information or maybe an adverse evaluation, there's a strong incentive for analysts to just mute that information rather than publish bad news openly. This, the study argues, is the core driver behind what they call strategic silence. Right. That makes a lot of sense from a, well, a business perspective. So it's not just random inactivity. It's a choice. This study identifies two main types of silence you mentioned. Can you walk us through that distinction? Are we talking about like a deliberate choice or just analysts being too busy to cover everything? That's a great question. And yeah, the distinction is pretty key. On one hand, you have strategic silence. This is exactly what we were just talking about. The analysts have negative potentially price sensitive information or maybe an adverse evaluation, but they consciously choose to stay quiet. Why? To protect their relationships with the firms they cover. The study's powerful takeaway here is basically what the analyst does not tell is the company's bad news. It's a deliberate withholding. Then there's non-strategic silence. Now, this happens when analysts might drop coverage simply because, well, they have limited attention, maybe they're too busy, or they shift focus to a different sector, perhaps. But even this non-strategic silence can reduce investor attention and reduce the overall information flow about that company. Okay, so it sounds like even unintentional silence could still have consequences for the market. But which type of silence, strategic or non-strategic, does the study find to be, you know, the more potent signal, the one that's really predictive of future returns? 
Yeah, that's crucial. While both types can predict negative future returns, the study's evidence strongly points towards strategic silence, playing the more critical and impactful role. The deliberate decision to withhold bad news rather than just mere oversight or being busy seems to be the primary driver of the hidden signal they uncovered. It suggests that, well, a calculated decision is often at play. Okay, now this is where it gets really compelling for anyone trying to decipher market signals. I mean, mm -hmm. if silence is such a powerful indicator, how on earth do you even measure something that isn't there? It sounds almost like trying to measure a whisper in a, you know, a crowded room. And then once you measure it, what does the silence actually tell us about how a stock might perform in the future? It's actually a remarkably innovative but also quantifiable approach. The study defines analyst silence not as a complete absence of reports, but rather as the average time length since the last report was issued. And crucially, this is for each securities company that has covered that specific stock in the past year. So it's a concrete metric measured in days, reflecting the duration since any analyst from a firm that previously provided coverage last published their insights. It lets them track the disengagement over time, and the results. They're quite striking, really. The study finds a significant negative correlation between this measure of analyst silence and future stock returns. Essentially, the longer a stock experiences this analyst silence, the worse its future performance tends to be. To put some real numbers on this for you, stock portfolios with low analyst silence, what the researchers call the active group, generated a remarkable 0.99% more monthly returns than portfolios with high silence, their silent group. Wow. Yeah, almost a full percent difference every single month. That adds up dramatically over time, as you can imagine. Wow, nearly 1% more per month. That is a significant, tangible difference. And the researchers didn't just stop there, right? They developed an investment strategy around this finding. Yeah. What were the results when they actually put this silent strategy into practice? They devised what they called an active minus silent or AMS strategy. Pretty straightforward, really. It involved buying stocks with low analyst silence, the active ones, and simultaneously shorting those with high analyst silence, the silent ones. And this strategy generated that significant out-of-sample monthly return we mentioned, the 0.99%. But here's the real kicker. Over the 2010 to 2023 period they studied in China, this AMS strategy achieved a cumulative return of an astounding 345.4%. 345%. Exactly. And what's particularly telling about this strategy's robustness, I think, is that it remained relatively steady, even during China's really tumultuous 2015 bubble crash period, when a lot of other strategies just fell apart. This really suggests that the bad news embedded in analyst silence isn't just some fleeting market anomaly. It's a signal that's gradually but consistently incorporated incorporated into stock prices over time. It points to a deeper, more persistent issue. That's incredibly powerful performance, especially holding up through that kind of market volatility. And, and this wasn't just a unique finding that disappeared once they looked closer, correct? Researchers really put these findings through rigorous tests, didn't they? Checking them against other known market factors like company size, book to market, profitability, things like that. How did the silent signal hold up? Oh, absolutely. It held up exceptionally well. They conducted extensive robustness checks, you know, the usual battery of tests, and they confirmed that the predictive power of analyst silence persisted even after controlling for a wide array of factors that we know influence stock returns. Size, value, momentum, profitability, all that stuff. This really solidifies the idea that silence isn't just an empty void or, or merely correlated with other market dynamics. It seems to be a distinct powerful and frankly actionable signal in its own right consistently predicting those negative future returns okay so we've established that analyst silence can predict future negative returns which is you know quite a finding but it raises an important question if analysts are choosing to be silent are they just withholding information from the public which could potentially harm market transparency or is there something else going on could there be maybe a dual role perhaps even an unexpected upside to their quiet that's precisely what the study dug into next. And yeah, it uncovered a really fascinating duality to the silence. On one hand, yes, absolutely, analyst silence does clearly hinder the public dissemination of information, no question. It's associated with more bad news and less good news appearing in future company announcements. Specifically, it negatively predicts future earnings surprises for up to four quarters ahead. So that's a year. This is a clear downside for public investors, right? 
Crucial information, especially negative news, isn't reaching the market in a timely way. And the study further found that stocks experiencing longer periods of analyst silence also experience larger post-earnings announcement drift effects. Basically means the market is slow to fully react to earnings news. So what this means here is that analyst silence actually impedes the incorporation of negative earnings information into stock prices. It effectively delays the market's true understanding of a company's financial health. It's a definite drag on market efficiency. So it's not just a lack of new good news coming out, but a definite delay in the bad news actually being priced in by the market. That does sound like a real problem for market efficiency, kind of keeping the public in the dark. Mm -hmm. But here's where the story takes that unexpected turn you mentioned. It suggests analysts aren't completely abandoning their role even when they're publicly silent. What did the researchers uncover about what they're doing? perhaps behind the scenes. Right. This is where the unexpected upside comes in. And it provides really strong evidence for that strategic silence hypothesis we talked about earlier. Despite their public silence, the study found that analysts can still play a crucial but private monitoring role. The research revealed that firms with silent analysts actually showed improvements in things like investment efficiency and, interestingly, reductions in discretionary accruals. And discretionary accruals are basically those accounting choices management can make to sort of, well, manipulate or smooth out reported earnings. They can often mask underlying financial health issues. So seeing a reduction there suggests better, maybe more honest accounting practices and these positive monitoring effects. They were actually more pronounced and firms that were identified beforehand as maybe underinvesting or having suspiciously high positive accruals. This suggests that the analysts were actively focusing their private efforts on addressing these specific, potentially problematic issues internally with management. That's a fascinating paradox, isn't it? So while they're not telling the public the bad news, they're potentially providing valuable insights and maybe even corrective advice to management privately. Exactly. It strongly suggests analysts are providing valuable insights, maybe advice, to management in private, which powerfully supports the idea that their silence isn't just abandonment, but rather a strategic choice to maybe influence from within away from the public eye. And this private monitoring, it even helps explain something else they found. Why the negative earnings surprise predictions, what we often call SUEs, standardized unexpected earnings, eventually turn positive after about a year. It seems to be because the underlying issues that caused the initial bad news are actually being addressed and improved upon, just, you know, out of public view. Okay. And the researchers were able to get some unique confirmation for this because of a feature in the Chinese market, the mandatory disclosure of analyst site visits. They found that these positive monitoring effects, like on investment efficiency, were only present when future on-site visits by those analysts actually occurred, which strongly suggests these visits are the mechanism facilitating that crucial private communication and expertise sharing between analysts and management. Okay, so any groundbreaking research, especially one like this that challenges conventional wisdom, it inevitably faces scrutiny, right? You might be thinking, well, couldn't this simply be due to general investor inattention? or maybe some quiet coordination amongst insiders for trading games, things like that. The researchers, it sounds like, brilliantly anticipated these kinds of counterarguments. So what were the big what-ifs they had to dismantle to really prove that analyst silence is a strategic signal and not just some other market noise? You're absolutely right. Ruling out those alternative explanations is critical for the study's credibility. And they did address them quite thoroughly. First, they looked at the inattention channel. You might assume reasonably that if analysts aren't publishing, maybe no one's paying attention. But the study found that even without published reports, analysts still kept a close eye on these companies. Those mandatory site visits we just discussed were key evidence here. So the return predictability wasn't driven by general investor inattention. Analysts were still engaged, just not publicly broadcasting it. Next, they tackled the coordination hypothesis. You know, the idea that analysts might be quietly tipping off institutional investors or insiders for trading gains. However, their findings actually showed the opposite was happening. Analyst silence was associated with decreased stock liquidity and a lower probability of informed trading, not higher. Furthermore, when they looked at institutional investors, they didn't immediately dump silent stocks. They gradually sold them over time, like slowly divesting. This evidence really argues against analysts colluding with insiders for quick, sneaky trading benefits. And finally, they examined investor sentiment. Could this just be a reflection of market mood? Well, they confirmed their findings were consistent across both high and low sentiment periods in the market, which ruled out the possibility that analyst silence was merely reflecting broader market optimism or pessimism. It reinforces its independent predictive power. 
So yeah, these checks really help confirm that the phenomenon of analyst silence as a strategic informative signal is pretty robust and separate from these other common market dynamics. So let's wrap this up. What does this all mean for you, the listener, the discerning investor, the market observer? We've learned that analyst silence isn't just an empty space. It appears to be a strategic quantifiable signal that can, quite reliably it seems, predict negative future returns. Now, it certainly hinders the flow of public information, especially that bad news, creating a definite downside for market transparency. We saw that with the Pete effect. But paradoxically, it also seems to allow analysts to exert a kind of private monitoring influence, potentially improving corporate behavior from within, which is, well, unexpected. This research really enhances our understanding of the intricate, often hidden relationships between financial analysts and the companies they cover. It's more complex than just buy sold ratings. Absolutely. And if we connect this to the bigger picture, I think this research fundamentally shifts how we might understand financial analysts. You know, beyond being just public cheerleaders or critics, they also operate in this nuanced truth of silence where what's unsaid holds significant weight, maybe even more than what is said sometimes. And this raises a really important question, I think. In a world drowning in information, you know, information overload, where else might silence hold such powerful hidden truths that we're currently overlooking in our analyses? That makes you wonder. That's a great point. So maybe the next time you're evaluating a company, remember to look not just at the reports that are there, all the noise, but to also pause and ask yourself, what's not being said? And what might that silence be telling you? 